Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Dan Bell Saturday. So glad to see you all here. Um, I don't know where we're headed tonight. We'll have to figure it out, but uh, we are going out and looking around town, and let's see what we can find. I'm a little sleepy tonight. Yesterday was my birthday. So, I turned 22 years old, and uh, I'm really proud of what I have accomplished, and these 22 short years that I've been here, it's amazing. Anyway, good evening, everyone. We should have a fun night tonight, I hope. Gotta see what we can get into. Right now, I'm over in uh, West Baltimore. And, uh, I am driving up this way. This, uh, up here, let me turn this around real quick so you guys can see this. <clears throat> On the right, and I can't even get a view of it because... It's so dark up there. Is that gate open? No, 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 no. No, it's locked up. Um, so this is... Uh, I guess they're going to do something with this place. Coming soon, the Afro Archives at the Upton Mansion. So, um, you know, it's been, uh, a while. Oh, we have a February 8th birthday. Hello. It's been a while since they've done anything with this. I, I thought it, I didn't know it was a mansion. I thought it was a, uh, I thought it was like a monastery. Because it's, it's like... Sort of the property is connected to the church. Hello, everyone. I'm driving, so it's very uh, difficult to see. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. Who's my uh, moderators in the house tonight? Who do we got? Who do we go? Oh, Heather Ray is here. Hey, Heather. Alina's here. Hey, Alina. Oh, Carla's here. DJ Eurosham is here. Tina's here. Let's give the, uh, let's give our moderator team a round of applause for keeping this a fun environment. In a fun space instead of the other way around. Um, for those of you who didn't see, um, I just posted a video with uh, Carpetbagger. Uh, he was in town um, earlier this week and we had a fun time going around. Um, Actually, there's the house we went into right there. But that was fun. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more um, <clears throat> uh, content on this channel. And I think where this channel originally started out as me constantly traveling around filming videos for the main channel and then if we went to something like weird or funny or whatever i would put that on this channel so this was kind of a channel to sort of you know kind of uh take b footage that i would not put on the main channel 
and release it here for everyone to see. And uh, there's been some hits and misses, but most of the time we get a, I get a pretty steady audience on here. I was growing really frustrated the last year or so because I, I was just like it's so, I put so much work into the videos on the main channel, and uh, I started thinking I'm like, well, why stop focusing on that? Focus on the filming channel and then do the videos on the main channel at my leisure. And stop taking fucking... Oh, excuse me. I don't want to say that part. Or stop taking uh, sponsors. The sponsors are the worst part because there is such pressure to deliver. And it's like... It, it really gets to a point where it just drives me insane. I'm, I'm just like, oh my god, please. Um, and I'm always down to the last minute. This is Pennsylvania Avenue right here. There's a lot of people out tonight because it's uh, 55 degrees. I'm at 60 degrees. So it's a nice, uh, mild night. Everyone's out, you know, chilling out outside. But anyway, so I was like, you know what? Just let me focus on filming. You know, I plan, I plan to go film some new videos for the main channel um, this month. Uh, I'm going to be going to Pennsylvania to shoot a couple of videos up there. And uh, they will just come and I'll put them on the channel. But I really, you know, it's like... It's nice to have an audience here, a supportive audience. Um, so I'm just going to be putting up a lot more content. It's amazing, you know, it's like the main... Oh, sorry about all that noise. The main channel, um, you know, doesn't get the, the growth that this channel gets when a video comes out. Um... You know, I've been steady getting a few hundred subscribers every time I put a video up, so um, that's a good thing. So I'm going to just keep kind of growing this channel and getting this channel back in the saddle for the next few months. And, you know, and then sporadic uploads on the main channel. But it just gets to a point, people, where it's just, hold on, i got to read this all. Hey, uh, Alcazona, oh, Alcazona, Arizona Alchemy, Jen, you create amazing content, enjoy your work, I enjoy your work, thank you, appreciate that, um, I try, I really do, I really want to produce some scary videos for the main channel again, I want to go back to finding scary places at night and doing that, you know, I miss that, I really enjoyed doing that kind of stuff, um, this is, uh, um, oh, not yet, next, next light is, uh, Pennsylvania and North Avenue, and this area up here, used to be just it's just so rich in um music history specifically um jazz and like Billie Holiday and Cab Calloway and all the big names of the day um you know th there was nothing but theaters and and uh jazz clubs and everything you can imagine here and it was an entertainment hub for the African-American community. Um, because back in those days, I mean, if you were African-American, you couldn't even really go downtown. Everything, every, it was all, you know, it was all whites only establishments. Uh, so this up here was, you know, it was very rich and uh, amazing nightclubs with... Uh, 
big stars, not like just whoever. There were big stars, big names playing up here. Um, the Royal Theater, which is on Pennsylvania the other way, um, Pennsylvania Avenue, it's been torn down, but um, every big act of the day played at the Royal Theater. And it's just a shame we don't have we don't have that anymore. It's just kind of you know all that stuff just fell to the wayside and a real shame. We'll see. Let's see who this is here. If I can push the button. Um, Fiona W. No, honey, you're the best. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, I can heart the thing now. That's cool. Hey, AJ Vintage. How are you? How old am I? I'm 22. I know I don't look well for 22, but I am 22. No, I'm 47. You know what's miserable? It's like... <laughs> um, back in the day, we used to watch that show, um, Absolutely Fabulous, that British TV show. And the, the woman on the show, uh, Patsy Stone. There's a... There's a, a... One of the episodes where they print her real age in the newspaper... And, uh, she's always telling everyone she's 39 years old. And I'd always think back, and I'd be like, gosh, 47, now I'm 47 years old. And I'm like, but I've gotten used to it. I'm not really, I want my 50s to be fun and, you know, getting back in shape and just, the next three years is going to be a lot of work but I'm determined uh, to make it happen, so I just I don't know, I don't want to spend 50s taking like loads of pills and you know, just feeling like shit I don't, I don't want to do it I want my energy back rain alert I think it's supposed to rain You know, we've never gone back here before. This is a pretty bad neighborhood back here. Lots of drugs. Go down the street right here. There's always uh, shootings and stuff down here. I already feel better. Um, I was having anxiety attack for like the last hour, and I told myself, I said, as soon as you get, as soon as you live stream, you'll feel so much better, and I do. So I appreciate you all being here. You're like my uh, therapists. All eight hundred of you. Say hello, Dylan. But there are always, um, my citizen app goes off a lot from that area right there. So, anyway, I'm going to talk about my birthday. I had a fabulous birthday. Um, my, uh, parents and my sister took me out to dinner on Thursday. Had a fabulous dinner, and then my texts were going off all day from people. Oh, Dan, are you are you having a party? I'll come over, and I'm like, nah, no parties. I just wasn't in the mood to have people over, and plus I have this 
mouse in my kitchen that it's just, it will not, the, the damn thing knows what traps are. It will not go anywhere near the traps that I purchased. Um, it's horrible. This is like a nightmare. Truly. Um, let's see here. Oh, Needles and Company, thank you for making cool videos. You're the best Redrix channel on YouTube. Well, I appreciate that. I don't think I'm the best. I think there's a lot of really good Urbex channels on YouTube. It's a shame that um, it's so played out now, but... Hey, Thomas, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, let's see this one here. Peepers. Happy birthday, Dan. Belated birthday. Love your videos. Especially the Creeps and Monsters series. Yeah, I love that too so much, and I can't wait to bring that back. Um, it's coming back. Um, I'm planning on shooting an episode with Brennan, uh, executive producing, and hope to happen sometime in the spring uh, is when we'll get started on it. It should only take about... It depends on how deep we go into it, but... It should only take about a week to two weeks to film, and then it'll probably take me another week or two weeks to do post-production. Um, but we've been talking about it. Brennan knows uh, the story. Um, it's a local thing that happened here in Baltimore. It's a cold case. But the person who murdered us is definitely a monster. And he's a creep, too, so... Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to do that one. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but we're just hoping that... We can interview some of his... Uh, his victims. There was, only, there was four of them. One died, and I think the other three... I know, I know one of them is still alive. But this happened back in the early 1980s but the place where it happened is like the creepiest place I've ever been it is so creepy there um which I thought that these woods where this stuff happened were going to be developed because everything up in that area has pretty much been developed and, uh, I went up there on a whim one day, and I was driving around, and I found the spot. There's two locations, two different locations, but it was kind of like a lover's lane kind of thing. And, oh my god, the woods, I was like, why are these woods ten times creepier than any other woods you'd see? Um... They're terrifying. Oh, this is Coppin State University. Right here. A fine institution. Of higher learning. I get jealous. Oh, shit. I wish I had gone to school. I almost left YouTube to do a professorship, but I decided to, I would become bored, um, so I stayed here. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh lord, guys, thanks for these super chats. Now if I can just open them. Um, Andrea, hey. Love your content, Dan. I'm glad I finally caught a live stream. Hope 
You're having a great night. I am. Thank you, darling. And uh, Donna. Hey, Donna Rafferty. Hope you had a very happy birthday, Dan. Sending love and hugs from Long Island. Thank you, darling. We have another one here. TCB Garage. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Let me just uh, get over here. And pull over here so I can see it. Where you... Oh, we should go to Leakin Park, shouldn't we? That's right up the road. We'll go to Leakin Park. Um, TCB Garage says, uh, uh, I really love the cutting room floor videos on the Filament channel. Even just the funky guitar riff <laughs> gets me excited. <laughs> Uh, yeah, TCB Garage. I definitely have more videos I want to do. And it's just feeding background into them. A lot of people really like that. Um, because I don't really explain the process of what went through making the video when the video came out. You know, I just, whatever. But, um, yeah, I don't mind making more of those. I, I'm going to start kind of... Oh, where does this go? Oh, this is the university. We're not going to be able to exit. Or maybe we can exit up here. Let's see. Uh, but much appreciated, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... it this way I think yes so we'll head over to Lincoln Park but I, I want to say just thank you to all of you for you've been so supportive over the years and you guys stick around um I've had many ups and downs in the last two and a half or so years um it's been a hell of a time, to be honest with you. I mean, I was not expecting... I wasn't expecting uh, to kind of just... Uh, I, I just went through a really horrible period of grieving. And it was because I got divorced. I, I thought it was depression, but... Looking back on it, it really wasn't depression. It was more... Gr it was just grief. I was grieving. And, um... And I had... I, I doubted what I... You know, I doubted getting divorced. I mean, I just... That was a hard thing for me to sit and admit. And... Finally, when I started to realize in therapy that it was grief I started to feel better because I was able to deal with that instead of just this you know with grief comes depression but uh, you know I, I just uh, I feel better now um, I am going to the doctors soon for uh, a big medical overhaul, a checkup, and I have to get everything done, colonoscopy, which I'll probably enjoy that, being gay, um, you know, ask them for the footage, so I'll have something to masturbate to, the camera going up inside of my bowels, um, while I'm high on, well, I could just do poppers, I don't need the anesthesia. Just do the poppers. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> I'm all good, doctor. What is that you're using? Oh, it's some um, video head cleaner. Slumber Inc. Good to hear you sounding better, Dan. Love you. I love you too. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> so anyway, enough of my colonoscopy, uh, I gotta get that done, I have to get a prostate exam, ugh, I have to get an MRI, uh, 
they're sending me to do a sleep study. Um, just even before the appointment, I have to go for a sleep study at Johns Hopkins. Because uh, I'm, I'm almost certain that I have, like, really bad sleep apnea. Um, which I've never had before. But, of course, I've never been this heavy in my entire life. I'm like a fucking blimp at this point. You could fly me over the beach with an ad printed across my stomach. Um, so, that has to be rectified. Arizona Alchemy again. Uh, Dan, we... Not the UPS. And Downs... But your creativity production... Oh, ups and downs. Jesus, what is... I can't... <laughs> your creative uh, pr production work and content is always high-end. Enjoy your content. Very, we enjoy your content very much. Thank you, Arizona Alchemy. That's much appreciated. Uh... Biting the bullet and going to the doctor is a big deal for me because I hate going to the doctor more than anything in the entire world. To me, it's like, I just, I'd rather just, no, I don't want to die. I, <laughs> when I turn 50, I want to be in a foreign country celebrating my birthday, um, feeling good, looking great, and still making videos. Because I really enjoy this. Until I make a movie one day. I will make a movie one day. This is right now. It's not the right time. Um, hey, Kate. Uh, long time fan. And I have... I have a long time fan. Oh, and you have apnea. Yeah, apnea. Um, so, a friend of mine who has it really... He had it really bad. I mean, he still has it, but... He wears the the CPAP. And... Uh, I have all the symptoms of... And it, it's gotten worse as I've gotten heavier. Um, and one of the side effects is overeating, which is what I do constantly, I'm always overeating, uh, I'm stuffed right now, you know, um, fatigue, you know, I'll be working on something, and I, like, literally am dozing off while I'm working on something, um, but my friend got the CPAP, and he was heavy like me, um, he's had it for a few years now, but he lost 170 pounds, and He's sort of my inspiration. Um, he runs. He goes to the gym. He looks fantastic. I mean, it's like night and day. And uh, he had obesity, obesity-related apnea, um, which is pretty much what I have because I never had it when I was thin. I, I never had apnea back then. So, I don't know, but, uh... Let's see here. Oh, Obese, hello. Happy birthday. Loved your video with Carpetbagger and his Crocs. Glad to see your drives again. You know, so many people love when I drive around. So, I mean, I have no problem. I'm up to it. I wasn't up to it earlier this evening. I took a nap today, and then... Uh, Dale, my my friend Dale, he Dale's kind of my friend, but he he was my assistant for a long time. Um, so he worked at my house and uh, in my office and stuff. And but he went and worked. He went and worked at AFI or whatever. So I wasn't gonna have anybody over. And then I I said, Dale, you want to come over and have a beer and. We watched that film King Cobra, um, about the porn murder, the gay porn murder with that, um, that, like, twink, 
porn star, um, Brent, Brent Corrigan, um, Hill, I don't even know why, I guess older men, I, I don't know, that does not interest me, I don't find anything that that, anything about it attractive or erotic, but Christian Slater is so hot, like, Christian Slater looks so good in that movie, and then I saw an interview with him on, with uh, AOL, and Jesus, the, the voice, and he still looks really good, and God, he's just, he's beautiful. I was like, damn. But that movie is really good. If you haven't seen it, King Cobra. I mean, it has some gay sex stuff in it. If you can't handle that, don't watch it. But it's a really, it's a, just a fucking insane movie. Okay, here we go. Into the park here on Weatheritsville, the last remaining road where you can actually drive through the woods in the park, and, uh, it looks the part, doesn't it, this road, <laughs> it, it totally looks the part, Craig says, anyone remember Christian Slater? Yes, on SNL. I mean, I always thought Christian Slater, because I was a big fan of uh, The Legend of Billie Jean. So I always assumed Christian Slater and Helen Slater were brother and sister, but they're not. Um. <clears throat> I just found that strange that they're not brother and sister. Um, boy, it's creepy down here, isn't it? Look at this place. Oof. Who could walk this road from where you go in to the end here? I think I could probably handle it. I wouldn't be excited about it, but I could probably handle it. Man, they're just dumping new shit down here. There's a stove and a microwave and a little refrigerator. The uh, city came in and cleaned up. That's all a lot of people are just saying no. Yeah, I, it, I mean, it would be... It would not be uh, an easy task, for sure. But, uh, I would say in the dark, I would be much more comfortable in the dark because if a car comes, you could just pop into the woods, they can't see you. Daytime, they can see you, but daytime doesn't seem as threatening, but especially when, like, sexual predators, um, like, they see me and turn over a new leaf. They're like, I think I'm done with this sexual assault stuff. Let me take a picture of that guy. I'm going to put it in my Bible. So every time I open the Bible, I can repent and uh, look at that picture of that guy walking on the road. Just, just some more self-deprecating humor this evening. It never gets tiresome. All I need here is a button with a damn laugh track on it. Like all that self-deprecating humor. Dan, you are just so funny. Where do you get your sense of humor? You are hilarious, Dan. But inside, I'm hurting. No, I'm really not. Um, 
because I know that I can fix all this. So, I don't, I don't, it doesn't, and you know, online, people are always cruel, and they will immediately just go to your weight, <clears throat> and insult your weight, and your, oh, you're fat, and blah, 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 and it's, like, so boring, it's like, oh, I'm fat, wow, um, well, at least we know your eyes are, like, working, I want to go through alleyways. That alley looks like a dead end, so I'm not going to go down there. Um. Shit. Norweek? Thank you, Norweek. Strange and trippy. I don't know where we're off to tonight. But we'll get there eventually. Hey, Catherine, how are you, darling? Um. Hey, Dan, get better. We need you um my uh dad passed away on January 22nd after um my birthday on the 18th well that's pretty lousy um love to oh god I am like completely Love so much to be here for a live stream. Finally, love you. Catherine Frampton, thank you, honey. And I'm so sorry to hear about your dad. You know, I... I one of the things when I'm around my parents... I appreciate my parents so much more now than I... Than I used to. Because they were some tough people to grow up around, honestly. But uh, now I just want them to live forever... <laughs> and um it's hard it's just something that it's really hard um I'm sure anyone who's my age and has you know parents who are a lot older and my mom's in her 70s my mom and dad are both in their 70s so I just worry and uh I just can't imagine. I, I just I don't want to, so I don't think about it that often. But I think I do that with everything. Dog, my dog, like Wee Wee, like I do that with her all the time. Like I look at her and I'm like, well, she's still, you know, she still acts like a puppy and runs around. And she's so happy and um, she's been staying with my parents a lot. She loves going to my parents' house. Um, she always sleeps in bed with my mother. Uh, my parents have separate rooms, um, um, cause my mom is an escort, so she has customers and clients come over, and my dad does, he just cowers in my old bedroom and puts earplugs in so he doesn't hear the, the, um, the, uh, uh prostitution going on. Uh, my mother's, she's... The oldest uh, sex worker in in that neighborhood down there, where they live. So uh, I'm proud of her for that. I mean, that does keep her young. I gotta say, I gotta admit, it really does keep keep her young. <laughs> My poor mother. Christ, all I do is pick on her and say horrible things about her. It's been that way forever. Ever since I was a kid, I've always picked on her. Her and her friends. I always pick on her friends, too. But no, my mother is not a prostitute. She's she's the C word, but she's not a prostitute. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. What's going on? Police are out. With flashlights, something happened over here. This is where all the goddamn junkies hang out. Shit, man, they're they're flashlighting, looking for, probably looking for shells, and all the junkies have cleared out because uh, 
whenever something happens, everyone's always looking the other way. Let's go up this road over here. We can see what's going on a little bit better. But there had to be gunshots because that's why they're looking on the ground. They're looking for shells. <laughs> just, just go, man. Go. Hey, Allen Train. Thank you so much, buddy. Now, this over here I went into this building on a main channel video with Dylan and I, I uh, it was like a nursing home or something we went in here at night we traveled from the other side down ahead here and we traveled up the alleyway instead of coming in this way and we were able to get in, but because the windows and stuff are so, like, they're not completely covered up with wood, um, if you use a light, people can see right in. Actually, they have now closed these windows up, so I guess whoever owns this property, the city's been on them to, uh, clean it up, but, man. <laughs> What a nightmare this neighborhood is. Over here is just trash, dumping, people dumping stuff. And then this is the old nursing home here. And you can see they put boards in there. So. These are all people on drugs. Everyone's on drugs. Here's the police. They're looking for, looking for something, but I don't know. Um, I can't believe we even got into that building. Um, I would probably place that up at one of the. One of the most dangerous buildings, abandoned buildings. And because the back door was open, every person over here who's getting high on the block, they're all going in that building to get high. And to use the bathroom. It stunk like hell in there. But I can't remember which video it is. I can't remember the name of it. It's a recent, like within the last year. Um, but this block just gives me the creeps. I, I do not like it over here. Um, we, I think I told the story. We pulled up there one day. We, we were scoping it out and trying to like suss up like what, if we were going to go in or, you know, how bad was it, whatever. Um, so we, um, we're sitting there, and it, I think it was a summer day. I had my window down a little bit, and this man, this, like, paranoid... And he was, like, so paranoid and crazy. And he was... He ran up to the side uh, where my my door is, and he's like... He's like, you 250? And I'm like, What? He's like, are you 5-0? And I was like, no. And I, oh shit, what the hell? They both just did a U-turn. I thought they were gonna, um, pull me over. When did we turn that one to? But anyway, he said, are you 5-0? And he's like looking in my truck. To see if I have like a radio or something. I said, sir, can you get the fuck out of my truck? I said, even if I were 5 0, what difference does that make? I was like, get the fuck out of my truck. Dirty ass. This is filthy looking. 
you know, paranoid, insane person. Um, just gross. Oh, remember, till next Friday, 35% off my entire website. This is DanBell.com. We have had a huge number of sales. Uh, so it'll probably take me the rest of the month to get everything out, but uh, 35% off. My recommendation is the set of 10 6x6 photos. Um, are they 6x6 or 8x8? Or 10x10? Sure, I'll wait. No problem. Sure, guys, take your time. It's a red light, but... Did you guys see that? It's insane. That was like some entourage or something. I don't know what that was, but uh Man. There is just all kinds of shit going on tonight. As soon as the it like in the winter, if we get just a little bit of time where the uh weather turns and we get like a, a warm night or a few warm nights everybody falls out and gets out of their house it's like daffodils you know and they run outside and they're like woo and then you get all these troublemakers and shit just causing problems but I don't care I want people to know. I want people to know. I'm going to turn the camera around. That um, I really like living here. Even though it's insane and ratchet as hell and crazy. There is never a dull moment in Baltimore. i rather live here than any suburb on the planet. Because I just... I grew up in suburbia. It was so... It's so boring to me. I like... And I think it's just because of my, like... Anxiety. I think of the... When I have anxiety... Baltimore will keep you occupied. I just have to hop in my vehicle... Drive around like this... And... My... Anxiety goes away. But I love this town. I was born here. I was born at Sinai Hospital. Oh, what is that? Um, I was born at Sinai Hospital. Um, I've lived in the city here on and off for the last almost 25, 25 plus years. Um, I love it here. Even though I complain about it and it gets on my nerves sometimes. And, and sometimes I'm just like, I gotta get out of here and I just take a trip or whatever. I'm always happy to come home. And Baltimore's, you know, I took this town and sort of used its minuses as advantages for me. And not in a, I don't want to make it seem like in some like exploitive way, because that's not what I'm, I'm getting at. Um, my intention was always to digitally preserve places. And, for example, when I started doing this, I don't think anyone... I mean, I know there was urban explorers, um, like, photographers that would come in and take photos of abandoned places. And, uh... 
so I was always I was always seeing pictures and stuff online, but I never saw much in the way of people going into these places late at night and filming by themselves and stuff. Just just an insane sort of thing that I started doing. And um the example I'm gonna give you is like the children's asylum, one of my classic creepy videos. Um the Uplands Mansion, another classic creepy video. The Sellers Mansion, um, which I covered so much. You know, I just went up there all the time because I was hoping that the organization, the nonprofit that acquired it, were, they were going to fix it up and restore it. All three of those buildings are gone. They've all burned down to the ground. There's nothing left of any of those buildings except for the videos that are online. Um, this happens to every abandoned building in Baltimore. They eventually catch on fire. Uh, most of the time it's deliberately set or it's an accident, but it's, it's a real shame. Um, I, that was always my intent. Now, I'm not interested in, I, I, I find beauty and blight. I always have. I've always been fascinated by just, you know, like, here's a whole row of homes that are completely abandoned. Um... I just, there's something about it, I, I, I don't know, but it has nothing to do with people or, or how, or government or politics, it has nothing to do with that, it's just, I look at things in a different way, I don't see them as, to me, there, there's art and blight and, 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 and beauty in what once was, um, you know, I'm not like a Kensington channel. The last thing that I would ever want to do is exploit the people who live here. Um, exploit people who are on drugs um, for views on YouTube. Like, that to me is abhorrent. I find that completely abhorrent. Like, if I'm on YouTube watching shorts and I hit up one of those videos where... One of the guys pans on these women. He pans the camera slowly from their, starting at their feet and goes all the way up their body. And these are prostitutes who are addicted to drugs. And it's like... I just find it so gross, you know? And he's out there making these videos and he's like, oh, it's for awareness. But he's taking home these fat-ass checks from the views he's getting on these videos exploiting people. I don't agree with that. Um, I mean, to each their own. I, m me, personally, I would not be able to... Morally, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I just... I, I couldn't... I couldn't do it. I could not do that. Um, I just have empathy for other people, especially if they're at their lowest, and that's not, as a, as a filmmaker, I, the last thing I'd want to do is jump in their face with a camera, um, I think the right way to handle it is, like, my doc that I did, Margie, Margie and Scott, you know, those are two people who are down and out, but I didn't want to exploit them. I wanted to tell their story. There's a big difference. If I wanted to exploit them, I would have made a 10-minute video showing them living in a motel together. I mean, so I just... Some things on YouTube, they don't need to be. Um, and the comment sections just turn into... They're just racism and people fighting over politics and all 
look what the Democrats did, and it's like so insane, it's so pointless, but the people who make those videos know that engagement equals views, and if more people who are talking on the video, you even have people in here who are so sick and twisted that they're talking about how they would clean the girl up and and have sex with her, it's like so horrible. But I, I, I shy far away from that stuff. I'm not interested in putting a camera in some unfortunate soul's face. To So, like, oh, I can get views. Or, Boy, this person's absolutely hideous. I'll use them as a thumbnail and, you know. No. I did a podcast a long time ago where I went around Baltimore on the streets and interviewed people in a podcast with to me it was much better than filming it um, and I think they, the people were much more comfortable and open because you just hear their voice nobody knows who they are and um, they're, they really opened up um, and they told I mean it's just sad it just it was so sad and then people said Dan, you have to, you know, continue, make another one. I'm like, I can't do it. I just could not make uh, another... I couldn't do it again. I just couldn't do it. It's too... It's just too fucking depressing. Um, so I really... I really lost interest in... Uh, in that thing quick. But... What I do now... We're driving around and going up alleyways and stuff. Uh, I enjoy tremendously. And uh, I got it because my dad used to take us all in the same thing. We would drive up to Baltimore in the 80s and drive around and go up alleyways and stuff. And those are just such good memories. Um, so I'm kind of keeping that tradition alive. I love when I bring friends with me and stuff or people from out of town. It's always a lot of fun, but, uh, I'm just into the row homes and the old factories and the industry, the abandoned industry and all that stuff. It just fascinates me. And I love finding stuff and then I get the address of the place and then go home and research and see what it used to be. Um, that, that to me is fun. Don't ask me why, but it, I just find it fascinating. Um, Alien Train. Hey, Dan. I really enjoy the Dead... I really enjoy your Dead Mall series. Hope that would uh, continue. Um, I have plans. Eventually... I'm going to say probably this summer, the, the, the plan is to take a very lengthy road trip um, and find motels and things of that nature to um, start putting stuff up in those series again. Um, the Dead Motel series, <coughs> that was just brilliant. I mean, I go back and watch those videos, and I'm just like, oh, this is so freaking cool, like, that the places in the Poconos were, like, the coolest things I've ever seen, um, especially that summit place, um, with the Arabian-themed, uh, nightclub, that Scheherazade nightclub, with all those painted Arabian scenes on the wall, um, and, you know, that building's gone now, it's been torn down, so, you're, you know, that's it for that place, and, and I was proud to say the first one to ever film that building, first, um, I, I read, the re how I found out about it was, there was an article in some, like, hipster online magazine, and the guy wrote about him and his friend going to the Summit Place. They found an old ad 
in a newspaper with a heart-shaped bar and and he knew it was abandoned so he said I have to go see this place so uh, him and his friend drove up to the Poconos and um, they got inside and they were walking around and then a bunch of police cars pulled up to the front exit or front entrance and they came in with dogs, of course, because the police up there have nothing better. Like, what? What did? Who do they think is in there? Like, what? Is, meth heads or something? I mean, it's just crazy. Um, but the police showed up with a bunch of dogs, and the guys got arrested and ticketed. And uh, I said, "Well, I'll just go in the middle of the night." <laughs> it's, um. So the first time I went, it was during the day. During the daytime. Okay, that's locked up too. But it's it's a this is this building is abandoned. Damn, I'd love to get in there. Um, I went during the day, and I, um, had developed this awful cough from breathing in mold at, uh, filming the Dead Motel series, and the cough was just awful, it wouldn't go away, and, uh, when I went in the summit, it was just mold galore, so I said, I have to get a respirator, so I left, got a respirator, and then a couple days later, I left at 2 a.m., and drove back up there, and went down in the woods in the dark, and went to film the inside of the club, and, uh, we, you know, waited till morning to get some of the other shots, and then, um, I was coming back up the hill, it's a, you, I dipped down behind a gas station, and I'm coming up the hill, and I look, and there's two cop cars sitting next to my vehicle across the street in a, in a dirt lot. I said, oh, no. But then in my head, I'm like, wait a minute. They would just come down to the summit, wouldn't they, and look for me, because they have nothing better to do. It ends up they were just sitting there. So I was, my heart dropped a little bit, but... I got the footage, and I said, this is really unusual stuff, like, that's a video that, like, 50 years from now, people will watch that and just be like, what the hell, that's crazy, um, but there's a lot, like, there's a lot of people on YouTube, um, Urban Explorers, like, like, the proper people have never, have never swayed from their goal, and honestly, I don't know how the hell they keep finding these places. I really... How do they find these places? They just found a 13-story hospital in New York. A mental health facility. In New York City. And they were able to get into it. I think it was down in Brooklyn. Um, I mean, it's just... It's just... That's insane. Absolutely insane. But they've never wavered. They've always had the same, you know, every two weeks they put a video out of a new place and it's some outrageous place that, like, you can't believe that it exists. I, I just, I mean, I guess they just travel a lot, but, man, they're good people. Good as in amazing work. Arizona Alchemy, again... Um, well, let me turn this around so you guys can see the road here. Here we go. Don't know why, but the urbex and abandoned places thing is interesting. Sort of modern day archaeology. I enjoy watching it. I do too. Um, there's some really miserable urbex channels that are not that good. Um, it's just people, uh, more into it to try to get views than 
actually having like a a real kind of passion for it. I'm not I don't know how passionate I am of like urbexing or whatever. I think I'm more passionate about um I don't know. Just just what is this place up ahead? What is that? A bar? Oh, it's a, it's a fast food restaurant or a gas station or something. Yeah, it's like a gas station. Now this is Mount Clair down here. And those of you who are familiar with this area, I've, I've brought, brought us all down here many times. Um, it's a rough area. Um, there's a lot of families that live here who are just, you know, living here. Um, and then there's a lot of nefarious stuff going on, like drug, drug addicts, drug dealing. Uh, lots and lots of prostitution here. But I'll be excited to go on some trips uh, this summer and get new footage. I may even go earlier. It just depends. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and br just bringing new videos. I'm, I'm, I just, I'm like dying to use my camera. I'm like, I want to use it so bad. Now, usually in the city here, I use my uh, cell phone with a large light <clears throat> because I can, you know, if there's any problems, I can just slip the cell phone in my pocket and everything's okay. Um, my camera, on the other hand, uh, you know, it's a little... It's a little it's, pricey machine and uh, I'm just I get really nervous but the footage that comes out of that camera is just brilliant beautiful cinema like quality footage well, let's, let's go over the bridge Dan Soprano. Oh, that's cool. There's over 1,200 people watching. That's pretty neat. Glad to see there's an audience for this kind of crap. Um, damn, I'd have to circle the blog. We'll do it next time. I'll write it down. Yeah, everyone, give the stream a like. That would be fan -hanking. And go buy a damn picture on my website. Or join Patreon. Patreon's five bucks. There's a lot of stuff on Patreon. So if you like are a fan of this, this is what I do here. Um, on Patreon, there's like a ton of shit on there. Um, that you'll really enjoy. It'll take you a while to get through it because there's a lot of I don't know. I don't remember how many posts. Like, it's over 400 posts. So, 
There's lots of videos. Things, you know, from my early days when I, um, tried to make two movies. <laughs> Real fun stuff. But I highly recommend going over and checking it out. Plus, it'll get me on the road this summer so I can make new videos. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, we're good. I don't need another ticket. Speaking of tickets... Oh, my God. So, I was... Uh, I got a notice in the mail that I had to renew my license... And, um, I was like, Ugh. I didn't yawn, I swear. No, I was like, I was like, ugh. And I, I just, I'm such a procrastinator. And, uh, I just keep writing it off, writing it off, not doing it. And, um, I finally just say, oh, I can just do it on the website. So I go on the website. It says, no, you must come in for a vision test. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So, I made an appointment. I went to the MVA and got the vision. I was nervous because I was like, oh, the vision test. Like, what if I fail? Like, how am I going to get that fixed and whatever? Um... But, uh, they didn't even give me a vision test. They just took my picture and gave me my old license back. And so I just used that until the new license comes in the mail. So I was all worked up over nothing. And I must say, the Maryland DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, they are fabulous now. Because you can make an appointment. And I made an appointment... And I was in and out of that place in 15 minutes. Got everything. I walked in. My phone said they'll call you within two to three minutes. Two minutes. There's my number. I go over. The lady takes my license. And bam, I'm done. Out the door. Unless It was like 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less. What happened here? A car accident. Oh, my God. Sorry, I just ran over something. <laughs> a piece of their vehicle. How did they do that? I think they're honking, trying to get people not to go through the, the light or whatever. This here is another big prostitution area for some reason. Um, I don't know why. It's very seedy back here. Um, Jesus, man. It's a very seedy area. There's a junky couple leaning up against the bricks. <laughs> Evan says Dan stops for nothing. He owns the streets. Thank you. Aren't you kind? There is also a, um, a sex club over here, uh, I forget what it's called, it's in a warehouse, and sometimes they'll have big <clears throat> events, and 
this whole street here is cars because they run out of parking. They only have a tiny little parking spot. Wait a minute, is that is that the place? I think wait a minute, hold on, we might be able to just drive up to it. What the fuck is that? Hey, what is going on here? It's a bunch of trash and it's on fire. Um, I don't think that'll spread. I don't know. But where's the person who started it? I don't see anybody. Unless they put a... Unless they put a cigarette there or something. I don't know. Now watch. I don't do anything. I'm not step... Like... <laughs> People are like, get out of the car and step on it. I, I'm not stepping on that shit. I don't know what the what's burning in there. Oh God. We're on one one way road. Excuse me, sir. Oh my God, this is it. They they have a gate open. So I don't know what this. Maybe it has a name on the outside. But this is it. This is the sex club. Right here. All kinds of stuff going on in there. Oh, God. I have to back off. Is it called Dionysus or something? I can't remember the name of it. Maybe somebody look it up for me. If you know where I'm at. Oh my god. You can't even go down over here. This is like an upper parking lot. You have to go out the way you came in. Okay, that is creepy as fuck. No, it. Never mind. It's like a pedestal planter knocked over, but it looked like something wrapped in sheets. Do they have the name of it here? BPH. BPH. That's the in abbreviation of what the place is called. But I think it's like a swingers like place. Um Hey Invisible. Maybe the fire was somebody killed a vampire. Vampire hunters have their own mobile apps like Uber. Invisible, thank you for that piece of information. <laughs> I really, that really helps. Thank you. Here we have a man going very, very slow on his bike. Here we go. What is this person in front of me doing? Let's just sit and see what they're doing. All right, now they're going. okay. Uh, David, um, 
Buy Pills Here. That could be the name. Buy Pills Here. If someone type in BPH Sex Club Baltimore, it'll come up. Wait, here. What does it say? BPH parking lot A is full. Well, you can kind of see in the doorway. But I think inside they have like a bunch of uh, like S&M shit you know all that kind of stuff stuff I'm not into I only had one like S&M experience my whole life um and I did not like it at all I did not like it at all I woke up and I was tied down to my bed and my father came in and urinated on me That was not a good experience. Especially on Christmas morning. That's kind of fucked up. I just wanted to see my presents. And while I'm strapped down to a bed and my dad's peeing on me. Merry Christmas. Be horrible. Anyway. <laughs> now, I really did have one. Well, it wasn't really S&M. This dude, like... Who I met at, like, a campground. Like, one of these gay campgrounds. Um, he said, he was like, I have a big fetish. Like, a rope fetish. Like, tying people up with rope. And I'd never experienced something. So I was like, oh, you should do that to me. Like, I want to see what it feels like. And so, he, like, really took his time with it. And, like, knew how to do all these different knots and stuff. And... He's breathing hard, and I'm kind of like, like, I'm like, ugh, I'm like, I don't like this. And he's, I, I could smell him. He just, he was gross. And uh, I, I said, can you untie me, please? I said, and he's like, are you sure? Like, he wanted to, like, get it on. I was like, no, dude. So he untied me. I was There was nothing erotic about it for me, personally. I was just like... I was like, this is fucking stupid. Like, who is... I mean, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna judge, but... What a... St stupid... Thing that was. This made no sense at all to me. Okay, we are here at the Goss... Goss station. I'm going to... The rope was, like, made for that kind of thing. For tying up a person but and not giving them, like, rope burn or anything. It was a very soft rope. But, like, he was getting ready to hog tie me and, like, pull my legs. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I said, untie me. Because I got paranoid. Because I'm like, this is a stranger. And we're in a camper. And there's no one outside the camper. So, but, <laughs> you know, I was like... It was just, like, not a situation I enjoyed at all. You can always tell... See how fast he's, that lady is walking? In Baltimore, that's a sure sign of drug addiction. When they're, like, running like that. <laughs> Alright, let me just put in a little bit of gas. What? Kevin Bacon is not dead. Okay, hold on. I'm not going to fill the tank, because it'll take forever.
There is something wrong with this pump. So we'll try this pump here. See if we can get this one to work. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Mike Johnson did a very good job. Hey, bit clips. Continuing on. <clears throat> I need to clean the inside of the damn thing. This thing just needs to... I need to <clears throat> take this truck and get it detailed. It's so dirty. Look how miserable that looks. What the hell happened? Love you too, love you too. There's a couple of uh, motels here. We'll drive to the parking lot. Well, actually, we'll go to the Swan first. You all remember the Swan Motel from uh, the first season of Dirty Room. The Swan was one of the most deplorable, unbelievable rooms I've ever seen. But it looks like they've done work on it. <clears throat> they have, uh, 
it looks like they've installed air conditioners on the uh, on the rooms. Um, bus air asked if I ever gotten sick from Urbex, and yes, once uh, in the very beginning, um, I got mold in my lungs and uh, was on antibiotics, and it was it was horrible. It was, I just had this wretched cough for like two months. It would not stop. Oh, okay. I passed the driveway. I'll just do a U turn here. Um, <clears throat> but it taught me a lesson not to go into moldy places without a respirator. So now I have a wear a respirator whenever I go in places and uh, make sure I'm protected uh, from inhaling. Oh, this is a one-way street. Well, there's nobody on the road anyway, so I think we'll be okay. But the swan, this is a swan update. Though I feel like I brought you here before, but we'll we'll just go and check it out. Whatever. Well, the sign has just been painted over; it no longer says "swamp." This this place looks a million times better than it did um, when we were here. I lied about the air conditioning. The, there were air conditioners in here. But we were in that room right there, I think. The one second from the right. But I have a uh, it was just awful in there. There was no no air conditioning, so it's a million degrees. And you can't open the... They nailed the window shut. And there's no fan or anything. What are you supposed to do? Even what they were charging was ridiculous. I mean, I think they charged... If I remember, it was $50, which... I mean, you can get a much better room for $50. It may not be paradise, but at least you have air conditioning. I wonder what these people who live in this neighborhood think. I'm sure they've at some point broke and been like, we wish this place wasn't here. I'm going to just do this real quick. Now, years ago, this motel had a, a diner. And it looks like it may be open. The lights are on. Let's see. That looks like a bar of some kind. This this coffee shop cannot possibly be open. It's not. It's it's closed. They just keep the lights on to make it look like something but <clears throat> it was open and my friend and I went to eat here and look at this did <sighs> if anything about this motel the signs are absolutely beautiful um I mean look at this sign this is a survivor by the way this sign Just look how gorgeous that is. That is a beautiful sign. And that's not LED. That's, that is uh, the original neon. Beautiful. So now 
here. Since so there's the rear of the motel. Here's someone's coach, camper, whatever that is. You can see, I mean, there's nobody staying here. There's probably ten people maybe staying here tonight. No, I have to be honest. I've never... I've never seen the rooms on this side. Uh, they have a, re a restaurant lounge and a banquet room. Can you imagine back in the day, like, having your wedding here? And this is probably a reception at one time. So instead of going to the front, you can just go there. But can you imagine having your wedding here? That would be awesome. Do you take this woman to be your wife? I do. Ma'am, do you take this man to be your wife? I smell doo-doo. I'm sorry, ma'am. Excuse me? I smell doo-doo. No, do you? I do. Do. What a depressing... This isn't going to be open much longer. There's no way that that is going to be running... Um, Ependies, miss you, Dan. Please start making more videos. That's the plan. That is the plan. I, uh, I really am. Uh, honestly, I want to do one video a week and one live stream a week on this filament channel. Um, and then the main channel, it'll take a lot of pressure off of me. I can just, you know, post one video or whatever there a month. Because those videos take me a lot more time than these videos do. Let's go to Fort Armstead. That's always a sleazy cesspit from hell. It's gonna take a minute, but we'll get there. There used to be another motel over here, and I can't remember. <coughs> I can definitely remember where it was, but it had this beautiful sign um, that I only saw lit up like a couple of times. Um, and it was one of those deals where you take a little road off this road, and then the motel is, is back on that little road. What the hell is that motel called? It had like a fancy name. La something, but the the sign was absolutely beautiful, and the rooms. Um, my friend and I went went half and half on a room because the rooms were only thirty five dollars, and we were there all night drinking and having a party, and the owners um, were these Indians and. We asked them, could we swim? It was like 3 in the morning. And they had no other guests. So they're like, yeah, just, you know. They're like, yeah, just use the pool. They unlocked it for us. We were like so happy. And um, we were fucking skinny, just skinny tipping in the pool. And um, they saw us, but they didn't say anything. So it was just like, whatever. Um, 
that place was awesome, that sign. And the room was a very retro modern um, design to it. So it had, you know, it was much more interesting than, than just the typical square block. But uh, we had so much fun that night. It was just fun. And the smell in there reminded me of vacation. Like when you go on vacation, like that's what the smell, what it smelled like. That vacation smell. When you like go to the beach or something. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. I just don't know how to describe this, that smell, but you only can really smell it in motels. And it just reminds me of like, oh, it's, you know, summer, it's time to go to the beach. Oh, I hate Metapsco Avenue. This has got to be the worst road in Baltimore. Pothole City. This road is so rough, it's just insane. Oh, hi. Um, Thanks for nearly sideswiping me, you drunken asshole. <laughs> that guy literally was, like, inches from the side of my car. <clears throat> Maybe that's why everyone tunes into this... to this show. You're waiting to see me have an accident. Well, one day it may come true. That'll be the high, highest voted... Stream, live stream. damn truck has to go into the mechanic every five minutes. These fucking potholes are ridiculous. Here we go. Can you people believe this? Have you ever seen a road like this before? This, this is ridiculous. It gets worse up here. I'm trying to think of the, <coughs> excuse me, I'm trying to think of the quickest route to the park. Oh, I think, I get, oh, I know how to get there. Never mind, Curtis Bay, and then go down to the, whatever it is, Fort Smallwood. It's, it is like a roller coaster. That's exactly what it is like. It is ridiculous. Yes, we're going to the gay park. Although most of the gay action happens in the woods. I won't be going to that area of the park. But it's kind of a mixed bag at that park. There's like... The, the kids with their cars doing wheelies and... They have parties down there. They bring in giant speakers and... We were down there one time and they were spinning... <coughs> uh, like... 2000s uh, rave music. And there were like ravers down there, and uh, I I filmed it, and then I don't know what happened to the footage. Yeah, I just don't know, but it was weird seeing ravers that are like 18 years old. Because I mean, is raving still a thing? I went from raves to ranting raves in my older years. 
raves to ranting and raving. <laughs> You know what, honestly, I think this city keeps, um, I think this city honestly keeps this road, uh, kind of fucked up so people don't speed, but I've seen people, uh, pop tires on this road, um, all kinds of stuff. Remember, patreon.com slash this is Danbo. Join up today. You'll be sorry you did. Um, <clears throat> Patreon is, uh, I've been on there for years. I was like one of the, uh, I was like the one of the first, like, three or four thousand people to sign up and get an account and uh it's always helped me make videos um travel and stuff like that uh but uh yeah if you want to support the channel I appreciate it if you can I understand and uh, that's it. I'm not e-banging anymore. Oh, this is danbell.com. 35% off the entire inventory. And then the e-banging is over for the evening. No more e-banging. That's what um, people who don't like me will always say what it is. <laughs> They're always saying that fat pig all he does is e-bag and eat. He won't live to see 60. It's like, good lord, man. I'm like, I mean, you may not like me, but your obsession with me is Actually, it's fabulous. You can say, oh, I have stalk. I have a stalker. Stalkers. People are like, wow. You have a stalker? I'm like, it's so hard. Meanwhile, I'm paying them to stalk me. No, but e-banking is what you call e-banking. Like I'm standing on the corner with a cup. <coughs> Only digitally. I'm digitally standing on the corner with a cup trying to collect your money. This is, uh, down here is a pretty rough neighborhood. 
Nicole Arbor died? Oh, come on. Please, that never happened. Is she seriously dead? Dying, she died from her lap track. Alright, I was gonna say, she's too vain to be dead. But I moved on from her. <coughs> She's right where she belongs. Nowhere. Her career is just dead now. She's not doing anything. Anymore. Curtis Bay. It's where my cousin Donnie lived. He was growing up. Donnie lived in Curtis Bay. This is down here is like kind of the crummy section, but you can go up any of these side streets that go up the hill. And up at the top of the hill is not bad. The, ho the homes up there not bad at all. But uh, all in all, the, oh my lord! Are you fucking kidding me, man? God damn this city. Uh, I, I swear to God. I'm gonna fucking... I, that is ridiculous. Okay. I, I'm like really getting pissed off. Damn fucking bullshit. I'm sorry, guys. Unbelievable. I mean, what? I don't understand why. Why would the city not come in? Well, what a what a ridiculous question. Trying to rationalize what the city government does in Baltimore. Forget it. Because they're always like, just call three one one if you have potholes. And I'm sure people have called and called and called. No one, and the city just doesn't. They just say what you want to hear, but they don't act on what you say. So I'm going to go slow through here because... Let me get over here. Maybe this is better. This right here is a strip club called Fantasies. I don't... I've never been there before. I should go and check it out. in the county, we, they don't have this kind of crap. The roads in the county are like 
smooth and brand new. The roads here are like... Hey Greg, what's up? Towards your next alignment entire yeah, seriously. I just have been, I just had a bunch of work done to the truck. So it's good. It has, it's gotta be good for a while, but um you will surely be tested. By driving in this godforsaken area over here. It's mostly, you know, this area over here is mostly uh, tractor trailers. Um, so I think when it snows and stuff, they're like using um, you know, the snow plows or whatever, and they're just ripping up the concrete and they never fix it in the spring or summer. I really think they're using it as some kind of a um, speeding deterrent. All right, let's see here. We got two of these. I'm going to check. Let's see who we got here. Hilberto Mendoza. Hey, Hilberto. Good to be with you. Here's a little something for some uh, aspirin. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. God, that was stressful, wasn't it? Um... Emmett, hey Emmett, uh, Dan, if you think those potholes are bad, just visit, just visit Bacon, oh, Baton Rouge, oh, dude, I know exactly what you're talking about, um, I've been to Baton Rouge, the roads in Baton Rouge are horrible, They could not be any more dreadful. Um, they just have, you know, it's like another one of those situations where it's another city that's bankrupt. They can't afford to um, fix the roads. So you just have to deal with, you know, awful roads. And, and uh, I remember... A couple of years ago, I was just headed out of town. I was going to go on a trip to uh, West Virginia. And I got on 40 on the highway to nowhere. And I hit the biggest pothole I have ever hit. And it deflated two of my tires. The passenger rear and the driver side. Both tires on a BMW, they cost like, you know, $350 a piece, I was so angry, and, um, you could still drive on them, they were like these tires that you can drive on, but I went to this, like, used tire place up the street, and they had the tires, so they put new tires on my car, and only charged me $160, so that was nice. I was happy about that. And it says Garth Brooks didn't sing about this part of Baton Rouge. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not very familiar with Garth Brooks. Um, we're actually, we're headed in. We're going to be in Fort Armstead in about five minutes. Oh, no, no more BMWs for me. Those cars are a pain in the royal ass. Back then, before I started YouTube, I had a real job. And so... My 
you know, client-wise, they'd be impressed if I showed up in a nice car because they'd say, oh, this guy's successful. I was. I was very successful. Uh, I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't keep going doing what I was doing, even though I was making ridiculous amounts of money. I mean, <laughs> huge sums of money. Uh, but this is just a different kind of hustle on YouTube. I mean, I'm doing basically the same thing I was doing before, but I'm just not shooting commercials and industrial films. And, you know. But I, I used to do really, really... My whole life was under contract... Which gets to you after a while. It's like, well, I can take a vacation in two years because I'm contractually obligated to be around in case, like, this place needs me or that place needs me. Um, I'm just running all day long. All day long. I would get up at 5.30 in the morning. I'd be out the door by 7. Uh, 6.30 or 7. And I wouldn't get home until 8 o'clock. And I still had to sit down and edit. So it was really, really very trying. What is going on up here? There's seems to be there's some vehicles in the road here. Oh my goodness. They're doing it again. Oh man. That looks like so much fun. We're going to stop on the way back. Dude, I mean, seriously, you have your brights on. I can't see what I'm fucking doing. Oh, my God. Are you... Is this guy... Damn. Oh, you know what? I want to catch the super chat before... Before it disappears. Um, Kaylin, hey Dan, thanks for taking us along, hope you're having a great night. I am, thank you, very much, I, I really am, thank you for that. And, uh, who we got here? You guys have been generous tonight with these super chats, I appreciate it. Uh... Emmett again. What I meant was Garth Brooks didn't sing about this part of Baton Rouge. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, Pottle. Okay, I understand now. That makes more sense to me. Thank you. Hey, DJ, what's up? Uh, Kevin Bacon was a Michigan gay man who was found bound and tortured. That's what... Oh, 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 okay. I see. And bus error, if I did see your $2, I'm sorry. I wish they would just put the, you know, even the, the under fives and the thing up on top so I could see the damn thing. But, uh... This park, um, I came here three times, I think, for, um, raves. They used to have raves here. One was called, like, Moonrise, and it was, like, a two-day rave. 
and it was crazy. Everybody was just completely fucked. We'd all be dancing. They had these speakers. It's just, it was so loud. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing the music, even down in the fort. A bunch of us were down in the fort, and you could just hear the music uh, blasting. Oh, look, 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 look. It's whole show. <laughs> that boy is hanging out the side of the window of that car. It's always all the girls and their gay friend who are like, get the hell, let's get the hell out of here. Ugh, oh, this sleazy place. They're doing it again. But I mean, honestly, that, like, once you've seen them do it for, like, a minute, that's enough. A few potholes here. It's a beautiful view here, isn't it? That's the uh, the key bridge. I had two friends who jumped off that bridge. One of them died and the other one survived. Man, this park, there is never a dull moment at friggin' Fort Armistead. All I can, all I can smell is... See, I don't want to pick up music. That's the problem. What body of water is this? Um, this is the entrance to the Inner Harbor of Baltimore. And then if you go under the bridge to the left, if you're going right... You're headed out to the Chesapeake Bay. It's pretty out here. It's like... <clears throat> It's like I'm in lo on Lover's Lane with 1,300 people. <laughs> We're all giving each other a kiss. Here on Lover's 
<coughs> oh, but tire shit stinks. Ooh. It's like acrid acid air. Uh, John, John Hanks, yeah, um, Starscape, yes, used to be here. Those were the days. Oh, and then there's like this, like, car parts here in the dark. You know what they're doing. You get a good view. So one in there is either getting pregnant or getting a disease or both. <clears throat> My dad, um, we used to come down here a lot. He, uh, he would drop his boat here on the ramp. There's a couple of ramps here, I think. Um, and we would go out here on the harbor and drop crab traps. And, uh, actually they were lines. So it was like from buoy to buoy. It was a line covered with chicken. Like every, every meter or so, <clears throat> there's a piece of chicken tied onto the line. And then you just put the line up on the boat and someone stands on the bow and then you just go slow and they're right on the chicken. You just grab it, throw them in the boat. And those crabs, they will mess you up. I'll never forget. I had a crab grab a hold of my toe one time. I have never experienced such pain in all my life. Um, Cecile. Hey, Cecile. Hey, Dan. Always good to see you. Always want to ask, but never do. Is it worth driving by the different locations of the Keepers? Oh, uh, the Netflix show. You know what, Cecile? I could do a Keepers Saturday night. I, mean, I, I do know where everything is. What a hideous story that is. We could do that one Saturday night. Actually, it would be probably better off doing it like on a Sunday during the day. Because uh, at nighttime, it's gonna be hard to, hard to see everything. Man, Fort, Ar Fort Armstead is wild. Tonight, all that craziness down there. Always just nut... Nuttiness. They got a fire going I'm actually not going to get out of the car because I don't want the music to, uh, and plus I look like a freaking bum. Dude, 
that is just freaking awesome as hell. If I weren't, if I were not doing a live stream, I would definitely get out of the car and hang out for a minute. That'd be cool just to bring a cooler down with some, some brewskis and just hang out. This, but I look like a bum. See, the pe like, Hispanics, like, people from South America and, and uh, Mexico and stuff, when they go to, when they go out like that, they get dressed up. So, whenever I go to, like, a place, like, Latin place or whatever, I always get dressed up because everybody's going to be dressed up. We used to go to this place on Broadway called Latin Palace, and they would play similar music, and... Oh, it was like a freaking workout, man. Dancing and dancing. And the guys... The guys dance so well. Um, man, I used to love that place. But that's, like, cool, man. They do it outside. Not in the clubs. Everybody can come and hang out. There's no damn police. So, they're, I mean... It's just so much fun, man. Good for them. I love seeing young people having a good time. They're so I don't understand that, like people get old, right? Like people who like go after pe kids on skateboards. Like I don't give a fuck if you're on a skate. You skate all you want. You know, scale the steps and rip up the concrete. I don't care. They're having fun. Let them have fun. Jeez, man. Kids just want to have have a good time, and everybody's so goddamn uptight, I see videos of these kids, you know, like, people deliberately walking in front of them, like, old people, so they knock them over, it's, like, so ridiculous, but, like, I, I love seeing kids have fun, skateboards, that, that little party down there, that's the kind of stuff I did when I was young, so I know how fun that is, so it's like have a good time it is tough being young it is tough being young and um, especially you know, especially if you like, are from another country you get to be with your people you know what I mean, and the culture in, in South America and Mexico is so different from here, from our culture, so, but the music is fabulous, the food is fabulous, the way everyone gets dressed up is fabulous, I just can't, I, I cannot stand this, like, older generation who, like, have to, like, shit on everything, like my parents, the same way. Let's try this road, shall we? Where does this come out? This is oh, oh, this is no outlet. I'm going to turn around. No outlet. I know it's back here. <clears throat> I've been back here before. Actually, we've been back here on a live stream. Uh, it goes all the way through the woods to a waterfront campground. My uh, mom and I were talking yesterday and um she remembers back in the day well when she was a kid you could walk from my grandmother's house and there were all these like beaches these like um there were like these little coves that came off the the bay and then <clears throat> there were like little beaches on the coves and all the kids would go swimming. And then when my sister and I were young, we would take our bikes down to this like ritzy 
neighborhood, waterfront neighborhood, and they had a pier, and we would just go and jump off that pier and swim, it was so nice, I can't imagine swimming in that water now, play as feces in it, but back then you could, you could just jump in and swim, it was so much fun. Let's see here. Let's see. So this is going to take us out to Ritchie Highway and then we'll head north up to uh, Brooklyn Park and then back downtown again. But this is kind of a creepy road. Well, it was really creepy back in the day um, before they built all these these uh, neighborhoods. I mean, they're just, they've just cleared like hundreds of acres of woods to build these heinous meadow mansions. Um, with, with stupid names like Tanyard Cove. I live in Tanyard Cove. But back when, when I was young, <coughs> this was just a two-lane road with no traffic lights and no street lamps. It was dark. But there's a bando over here that I wanted to go into, but I don't know what stopped me. There used to be a lot of abandoned places down here, like old houses just stuff back in the woods. You could walk back in the woods and find abandoned homes and all kinds of stuff. We found a, um, one of those old Ford, those like 1920s or 30s Fords with like the round lights on it. It was like just sitting under this decaying roof of a little parking structure. I had seen better days, but it was, I can't believe how built up this is. This is crazy. There is nothing left. Why do they do this? I, I just don't, I, I, I don't understand. <coughs> we only have, uh, let's see, 18,000 vacant homes in Baltimore. And they're just build. I mean, this is only 20 minutes away. They're building and building and building. They never stop building. See, now this is what the road, this is what it used to look like, like this dark and creepy. And this road here is especially. Oh god, I can't even see what I'm doing. See, they're getting ready to build here too. There's signs. I love old roads like this that are just like creepy as hell. Hold on one sec, guys. Sorry about that.
I was just checking a text. So this spits out over here. This is a... I forgot what this neighborhood is called. Um, but I was always told to not go here when I was a kid. Like, a teenager. So, of course, where did we go? We came right here. But it was just... Kids in our school. Always partying. Even if we couldn't find a party, we had our own party. be a house back here too that decorated for Christmas and it was like the guy spent a month putting all the Christmas lights on it was like the most insane light display you could possibly find anywhere it was insane I'm so glad I did this tonight. I, I was kind of on the fence earlier. Because I didn't know if I... But then I said, you know what, just do the damn thing. And I'm so glad I did. Tonight's been fun. It's been a good night. Everyone's having a good time. I'm sorry, I can't read everyone's posts. It's just, uh, my phone is, uh, like, the, <clears throat> the, the chats on it are so small. I'm kind of obligated, you know, I'm obligated to read the chats that people pay for. The super chats. Um. But the other... Uh, comments, I try to, you know, I just, I see some of them, but pulling out, I would have to pull it over. Alright, this is, we're going to take Richie Highway up, instead of 10. Is that 10 or 100? 100, I No, it's 10. Excuse me. Someone said I, they saw a raccoon. We're going to Holly World. See, I can see, when it's all, when it's all big letters, I can see it, but when it's small letters, I can't see anything. I'm craving, like, a fucking Slurpee, but I'm not getting a damn Slurpee. That, I love the cola Slurpee with cherry on, like, cherry slurping in it. Hey, Dan, I'm the one that is to decorate 29 Marley. Seriously? Cynthia Turner, are you serious?
over here on the left is uh, Glen Burnie High School. Oh yeah, Cynthia used to decorate 29 Marley Neck Road, which was another uh, Christmas house that was like insane, <coughs> where the people, Cynthia probably was obsessed with, because Cynthia, do you still, um, do you still decorate there, or do you, have you stopped, or you moved away, or what? Hey Josh, how are you? Oh, Cynthia. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Cynthia, keep me updated. Send me a, a message and I'll come down next, next Christmas and check it out. <coughs> This, uh, on the left here, I'm sorry, on the right, is this cemetery right here? Um, my cousin was driving, uh, her son, uh, on this road. And he was a little boy at that time. He was only maybe four or five years old, three, four or five years old, somewhere around there, <coughs> and he, he's in the back seat, uh, he's staring out the window at the cemetery, and he's like, he's like, mom, look at all those kids playing out in the cemetery, and uh, my cousin said, what kids? There's no kids out there. He's like, no, look at all the kids. There's a big group of kids playing in the cemetery. And there were no kids in that cemetery. <laughs> very, very creepy story. I mean, it could have just been his imagination or something, but still, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> You know, this has been a very fun, successful live stream. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Sometimes I, uh... I, uh... Well, every time I start one, I always <coughs> believe it's going to be a disaster, so... Nothing new on my end. Always a pessimistic view of everything. I love you too, luxury. Uh, nightmare. Night. I don't know.
Over here on the right is the uh, the old jumper. I'm, I'm sorry, the old Glen Burnie Mall. It's gone now. It's been demauled. So there's like one corridor left from the mall, and they left it looking original. They didn't change anything, so. Oh, I miss Art Bell too, AJ Vintage. That, that show in the 90s, I listened to that shit religiously. Such a great show. He was a great guy. <clears throat> And so many people ask me over the years if I'm related to Art Bell. <laughs> like, I'm like, I wish, but no. He had that wonderful old school cigarette voice that just made the show so soothing to listen to. Something very soothing about him about his delivery and the way he talked and when he gets those crackpots on there. The, my favorite one of all time was uh, Buzz, the, the guy, the Texas dude who killed the two Bigfoot and buried them <laughs> and gave Art Bell a map of where the Bigfoot were. Was his name Buzz? I think it was Buzz. That was that was so much fun. And I'm just laying in bed and I'm like, this is the dumbest shit, but you couldn't stop listening. It was just a total train wreck. I told I was like <clears throat> I don't know if my dad used I I definitely got my dad into listening to it, but I was like, it's the weekly world news on the radio. But yeah, man, Art Bell was awesome, man. He knew how to run a show. I love when they did open lines and <coughs> the guy calling in from Area 51. He escaped. And then Art had him back on later on because it was a hoax. Well, of course it was a hoax, but the guy came back on the show as himself and then Art said, well, I've been had. But I don't think Art ever took any of the stuff on that show very seriously. I think he just, you know, he left it open. He left it open. You know, he was never preachy or anything like that. He just kind of left things open and asked the right questions. That show is terrible now. The Coast to Coast with uh, George Nori. He is the worst host I have ever... He's horrible. I don't know if anyone even listens to that. It's unlistenable. He's like, have people walked with Jesus? I'm like, goodbye. Did Jesus appear in someone's kitchen that's what we're talking about tonight it's like no I gotta get off I gotta go I can't do it but Art Bell I listened to the reruns <clears throat> I loved when he did Midnight in the Desert what serious uh, I listened every night and then like just a couple months into it, he said, this is our last show. And I'm like, what? I was so pissed off. But he had some disagreement with people at Sirius. And he just said, I'm not doing it. He's like, fuck you, I'm out of here. So... What a guy, man. Was awesome. So, uh, next week, uh, I'll probably do another one of these. Um, you can check two hours before nine o'clock your time, my time, I mean, 
Uh, I'm not going to do these every Saturday. Uh, I'm not going to make it like, you know, some maniacal thing in my life that I have to attend to every week. <coughs> um, there's just sometimes where I don't even like, what is like water? I'm like dying of thirst. There's just sometimes where um, I just don't feel like talking, so I kind of just shut down and don't talk, and then um, you know. You know how that is, everyone. Sometimes we just don't feel like saying a word. And so that's what we do. We don't say a word. Hey, uh, Crips, how you doing? Thanks for being here. This is another kind of rough part of the city. This stretch along here, it's always been shady over here. Wherever there's drugs, there's foolishness. It seemed like back in the day that it wasn't as bad as it is now. I think they were a little more secretive about selling. Now you just see people... The drug dealers don't even worry anymore. They sell right in front of, you know. Back in the day, too, I think it was a lot harder to score a syringe if you are not <clears throat> in the medical field. Uh, I believe, uh, excuse me. I believe at one time, the only way for someone else... I don't think you could score um, syringes without having some kind of a medical license or, or someone who works for a, a medical place. Um, because certainly, uh, this day and age, I mean, I think you can buy syringes on friggin' Amazon. Up here on the right is beautiful Harbor Hospital. kind of a, well, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to be in there. That's where my sister went when she had cancer. She went there and got treated. I was like, why are you going here? <laughs> But our gynecologists, I think, work here, so. <clears throat> I need water. I've been talking for, like, almost three hours. I need to get some water. I get coughing. My throat is dry. My 
mouth is dry. I don't need a big gulp. I need a big gulp of water. I don't drink, I don't really drink that much soda. But I do drink soda. I mean, obviously. Look at me. I love when people my weight are like, <clears throat> they're like, I don't touch sweets or soda. And I'm like, oh, shit, you lying. You're, you're a liar. I don't touch <laughs> I don't eat chips like, yeah right <laughs> I'm like you're eating something they uh, were planning on Placing this bridge it has uh, <coughs> run its course. I mean, we want to replace it, but they haven't. Uh, they band aided it by repaving it, even though the underneath is like falling into the creek, into Curtis Bay or whatever that is down there. Marley Neck. No. I forget the name of that cove. Fed Hill that uh, just has exploded. I mean, th this was at one time a working class neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> all people who works in industry uh, lived here. And um, then the neighborhood went through a change because industry closed down and then everyone started to leave. They were trying to sell their house. You could buy a house here for nothing in the 70s and 80s. Now the house is here at 400,000 plus. But <clears throat> the little neighborhood here just tumbled down and it was drugs and wasn't really safe anymore and now it's like completely different it's safe now I mean not completely safe but it is I wouldn't worry too much My friend used to have his, uh, <clears throat> he had his, um, band practice space down here in this dilapidated old house where, <clears throat> I think the rent was like $150 a month for a three-story house, and it was a dump. It was so bad in there. Just dirty and disgusting and really bad. I 
I remember we went there. Uh, one night, and we were watching them play. They were like a punk band. <clears throat> and um, this dude named Chris, who had really long hair, he was a really nice guy, and uh, this troublemaker named Pat. <clears throat> We all walked over to the Inner Harbor and went swimming in that fountain that used to be down there. They tore it down. But we jumped into that fucking water of that fountain. And, uh... <laughs> I still can't believe we did that because that water, I mean, people were bathing in there, spitting in it, peeing in it, shitting in it, and here we are, swimming around like mermaids, and, uh, um, we, we swam for like half an hour, we were so drunk, and we got out, and we were walking up this way. <clears throat> to go back to Pat's place. And like. Two police cars pull up. And they're like. Why are you wet? And we're like. Huh? Like what? I was like. We're sweating. <laughs> like why are you so wet? Wait, were, were you in the harbor? Were you in the fountain? I guess they were trying to give us a fine or something. But, um... Someone asked, um... Dan's half asleep. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Um... Someone asked about my friend who jumped off the key bridge. Um, <clears throat> it was two of my friends. Uh, my first friend, she was a female, and she unalived herself successfully uh, jumping off that bridge. And uh, that was really sad. Uh, I had another friend who somehow, like a miracle, uh, jumped off that bridge, and he, uh, survived, and he was, uh, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> he had, like, a broken back and broken ribs, and, uh, but he was able to pull himself over to one of the pillars, and then a boat picked him up. Um, and he's still alive today. He, he uh, I think that was <clears throat> a big wake up call for him. Um, but I, I can't imagine jumping in that. At night, I mean, it was nighttime when he jumped, so I, I, I can't even imagine how scary that would be. Uh, Iranian kiddo, hey Dan, do a thrift store roast again. Those were hilarious. Yeah, I will. I've started the last two videos doing that. Uh, but I'm gonna, um, Chris. The ultimate cold plunge. The only reason he, he lived is because it was late in the summer. It was boiling hot that night. So the water in the harbor was not cold. It was, you know, pr probably in the upper 70s. Um, my other friend who unalived herself there, she jumped off the bridge in uh, January or February. That's why she, uh, 
perished because the water like if if the jump didn't do her in the water would have killed her so <coughs> but my friend told me he couldn't remember he couldn't remember anything until he got to the pillar he doesn't remember falling or hitting the water or going underwater or anything and I imagine from that height you would, you would probably go down 10 feet or so maybe more and come back up again if you broke your back and all that kind of shit that pain would be really bad you took a tough time swimming up Yeah, I, it just, it, you know, back then I had a, a lot of friends <coughs> who died of overdoses and unaliving themselves and uh, AIDS. And, I mean, it was just it was a rough time. It was a fun time, but... Well, everyone, I think that's going to about do it. I'm ready to go to sleep. Um, thank you all for joining me. There is uh, <clears throat> some links in the description if you want to check those out. And as far as I know, I'll be back here next Saturday. I really hope you guys enjoyed this night. We had a nice crowd in here. A lot of people. And uh, I'm always happy to see you all happy. My beautiful fans who keep me uh, clothed, bathed, and housed with your generosity and your uh, support. So, Love you guys very much. Have a wonderful evening, and we will see each other next week. New video out next week as well. See what I can get into. Alright, you guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.